recent budget cuts are causing trouble for youth homeless at shelters in DC. Little funding has forced many shelters to turn people away. Bridget Gales has a story. Recent budget cuts in DC have left many homeless youth out in the cold. Although there has been a budget surplus of $417 million, funding for homeless youth shelters has been cut by $700,000. Overall, homeless services funding has been cut by $7 million. Executive Director of the National Coalition of the Homeless, Neil Donovan, says when funding is cut, people often are forced to return to dangerous situations. Some people who are you know, victims of domestic violence will return to the batterer. Some people who have chosen not to live in an environment where substance abuse is rampant will go back into those situations. People might decide to just fall out onto the streets, which is something that you're seeing now across the city. Youth shelter Sasha Bruce has been hit particularly hard as it's been forced to reduce from 16 beds to five. An employee from Sasha Bruce says these budget cuts have sent a poor message to the youth. To see when you see, you know, the budget cuts and money being taken away, I think it sends a message to these kids that they're not that important. And that really hurts me. That really hurts me. Even with less money, Sasha Bruce continues to help homeless youth in the city so that they don't have to return to the cold streets. In Washington for District Wire News, I'm Bridget Gales. Here with me today in the studio are Gina Bullitt and Jasmine Williams from Sasha Bruce. We're going to talk about the future for homeless children and shelters like theirs. Thank you both so much for coming in today. Um, we just see it in the package how these, uh, these cuts are generally going to affect Sasha Bruce. Gina, maybe you can talk a little bit about your work at Sasha Bruce and what these cuts mean for your work. Well, as a primary counselor at Sasha Bruce, um, Amongst my duties, I take crisis calls every day from young people and their families, um, for young people that are struggling, that are homeless, that need to come into shelter. And on a daily basis, we're turning young people away. Um, our shelter beds in the last um, year have gone from 16 to 5. Um, in past years, we've served up to 250 youth a year. In addition to, at any point in time, there are um, approximately 30 young people in our transitional living programs. Um, cuts like these um, and the severity um, jeopardizes the services we provide and it means that we serve less young people that need our support when in fact there are so many more mm -hmm. that need our support. And what happens to these children who are actually turned away? Like, do, is there any place for them to go or do you actually take care of them nevertheless? Like, or? There, there is nowhere else um, for them to go in most cases. Um, what we do try to do through via the crisis calls, we do try to con um, connect them to community-based services. We have different outreach programs and things of that nature. But it doesn't escape the reality that a lot of these young people need to come to the facility for shelter and there's not a bed for them. Mm -hmm. Jasmine, uh, you're, tell me a little bit about your, you're a resident in Sasha, at Sasha Bruce, is that correct? Tell uh, me a little bit about what Sasha Bruce means to you and um, what the program means to you. I am actually a former client through Sasha Bruce. Oh. I, I was with uh, one of their, several of their programs actually. I moved around a bit for about three years. But uh, even though I'm no longer a client, I'm still a testament to how valuable the services that they offer are. Uh, I came in um, an abuse victim, completely homeless, no resources whatsoever. My family wasn't trying to help me. So uh, throughout that time, I got so many services aside from just residency. I was able to have somewhere to lay my head for three years. Uh, I was encouraged to go back to school. I graduated. I'm in college. I even have my own place now. And uh, all the skills that I needed to attain all of those things were given to me through Sasha Bruce. So I definitely know how uh, crucial it is that this census funding was cut where it's needed. Do you still have, do you have friends who are affected by this right now uh, who, who might have been turned away or who, who are homeless at the moment? Uh, I work for the outreach program that Gina spoke of in Sasha Bruce, so even though I don't have any friends, I see young people every day who come to us for services, so all kinds. That's so definitely a, an ongoing issue. Absolutely. I think we have a soundbite from uh, uh, Mayor Gray, he had uh, from his uh, State of the District uh, speech. We're just going to have a look at that right now and talk about that right afterwards. And as you know, his overarching goals are fourfold, to grow and diversify our economy, to educate and prepare our residents for the district's emerging new economy, to improve the quality of life for all of our residents, and to become the most sustainable city uh, in the world. 
Okay, when we hear this, um, what, what Mayor Gray said there, um, and he talks a lot about the economy, um, do you think that the that this DC Council has the, the, the wrong priorities at the moment? I wouldn't say the wrong priorities. However, I would say if you're looking to better the DC economy, um, what better opportunity do you have than to invest in a young person? Mm -hmm. And particularly when there are so many young people out here struggling, the cuts should not come from youth services, particularly youth housing and homelessness services. Because if you want to take an opportunity to help a young person who's probably not doing well in school or might not be attending school because they don't have a safe place to lay their head every night, um, if you want to talk about their ability to contribute to the economy and the workforce, then we need to help them now. Mm -hmm. And we don't need to be turning them away. I think there was uh, a certain rhetoric as well in the DC Council that they were repurposing the money and not cutting it. Um, can you maybe uh, elaborate a little bit on that? Well, um, in terms of repurposing the money, I, I don't understand how we could repurpose it away from our young people. Mm -hmm. You know, our young people need to be our first and foremost investment, especially if we want to change the city and make this a better city for every DC resident. Well, thank you so much to the two of you for coming in and giving us this insight. Thank you very much. The DC special election is coming up in three weeks. We've got a sit-down interview with two candidates who are running for DC Council at large. We'll talk to a local journalist also who's been covering the election after the break.